This year has been yet another busy one for the Isle of Man's junior cyclists, with up-and-coming Manx competitors in the sport once again getting the opportunity to develop and shine on the national or even international stage. Among the notable achievements this year at that level, the Isle of Man has had the chance to field younger riders in senior competitions in the UK and also at major international events such as the Commonwealth Youth Games. As ever, those behind the setup are now looking ahead as to how to keep things growing over the next 12 months and beyond. Included in that is what could possibly be a potentially significant change to the system. To find out about Junior Cycling's vision for the future, as well as giving an overview on the season to now, I spoke with Isle of Man Cycling Development Officer Rob Holden. We've got quite a high bar to measure to historically, haven't we? So I say it's been pretty good. Um, there's been The positives have been, for the first time in the junior team uh, which is sponsored by Upmost. We've had a junior girl progress through from the youth ranks, Sophie Smith, and she's been amazing in her first year as a junior to be quite frank. Not so many opportunities, race opportunities in the UK, so just to give people an overview of what we try and do with the uh, Upmost junior team for Alaman junior riders is we try and give them opportunities to race at the highest level in the UK which then gives them an opportunity to see what the level is and and hopefully progress from their two years in juniors and they then go into the under-23s to maybe make the next step up. So the bigger picture is, and when we look at Alaman Sport objectives and Alaman Sport aid objectives, ideally we want to get athletes into a position where they can um, maybe think about making a career of their chosen sport. So those historically have been the best opportunities to do that for for this age group is to go to the UK, ride some national series races, British national series races, find the level. uh, And if they do okay, they generally get invited onto, hopefully onto international programs. And this historically has worked really well for for the Alaman because we don't, you know, obviously uh, most of them race locally and it's quite challenging to get uh, across that stretch of water and uh, uh, get exposure to some decent racing. So in particularly for Sophie, yeah, she's had a really good year. For a first-year junior to be riding at the level she's been, she actually rode what we called an elite series uh, women's race. So that's not for her age category. That's actually for all the best senior elite women in the UK. And she actually finished third in a race in September. So that's... Um, uh, that was an amazing result. In terms of the boys, yeah, they've done pretty pretty well. Uh, we had a really good. We took the team to. We took four of the team to boys team to Ireland Junior Tour of Ireland, which is a six day race, international race in Ireland. Uh, historically, a really good race, and if you look back through all the the winners, there's um, there's some phenomenal riders in there. So it's got a really good pedigree, a really good history. Really challenging for them because a it's six day race, which is not normal for this age category. So that was the first challenge. The second challenge is going from seventy to eighty rider bunches road racing to one hundred and twenty, one hundred and thirty. So that was the next challenge. So, but what we did for this race was we actually gave them a really good support package in terms of Mark Christian, uh, former pro cyclist, Euro d'Italia rider, Great Britain rider, came along as the the director sportif i came along as support in general and it took the guys out of the comfort zone but we also gave them a structure and a support network that was not result focused and just focused on the process of getting through the race and where the challenges would be in the race to put them in the best position they actually came out of the race with a stage win and fifth overall and a really good set of results for riders that probably exceeded their expectations really and I think for myself and Mark you can always see the potential in some of these riders but quite often they're quite too results focused rather than focus on what they need to do during the race just to get the best out of themselves but I think we gave that to him and I think it showed in results so I think for me Personally, that was a highlight of the year for those junior riders. So that's hopefully what we're looking to do a bit more of next year to to give the juniors a, a bit of a, a support network at some a select few races. Because what's happened, although we've got a rich history of riders and athletes punching them well above their weight over the years, and you know, obviously the the headline names are your Mark Cavendish, your Peter Kenyuks, and Lizzie Holden, Anna Christian, all all these sorts of riders that have made. Uh, made it into the world tour what's happened for this age category now is that they now need exposure at a, a much higher level and that means going to european races a little bit more and the uk races are coming becoming a little bit less relevant 
in terms of getting them up to the next, getting them up to the next level, and hopefully onto onto higher academy programs, basically, and even pro teams. So that's the challenge for us in the in the coming years to to support these riders. Just to pick up on a, a couple of points you made, one of the early ones you made is that uh, one of the main focuses of the uh, of the junior cycling setup on the Isle of Man is to make sure that these riders get the opportunity in say UK races, start to find their level. In terms of the quantity of opportunities available for the different riders, how has it been recently in light of the fact that, uh, particularly across the water, there's been a lot of debate about what's actually available to uh, cyclists coming through the ranks? Yeah, I mean, um, British Cycling, who run the Great Britain Cycling Programme, they've had a, n- a number of challenges, as uh, as so many organisations and businesses across the world, sort of post-pandemic. So they've had to restructure um, quite a lot of their programmes due to finances, etc. So some of the pathways are reduced. So in, in terms of, and, and just to be clear, you know, so the riders we're looking at is predominantly road racing, some mountain bike, you know, we've got some junior riders who are quite, quite a good level at mountain biking. But if we're going to look at opportunities in terms of making a career out of it, road does offer more opportunity for that, I, i.e. there's more more of it. Uh, more teams, therefore more opportunities. So it's really challenging. I think the challenges for the other challenges is obviously a lot of the Great Britain program is track focus. So indoor velodromes, think of that at the Olympics. And a lot of the a lot of the financial support goes towards that in the UK. So the challenges for us is A, we don't have that facility. So to use it, we have to travel quite a lot. And it's never been any different. And obviously, if you if talent always shines through in the end, as, as, we've, as, as we've frequently shown, um, despite not having that facility, but so if you look at the road opportunity, that is now looking more like we need to uh, expand a program of looking at some races in Europe, in Northern Europe, maybe uh, in, in sort of France, Belgium, maybe a little bit further afield. But it, it, it is doable. But its challenges is it is doable, and I think we've got never ceases to amaze me the the talent that comes through, you know, Dots Youth League that provides this junior team with the riders and they it's it's you know we're still seeing that that throughput really so which is why it's important i think to put some structures in place to enable this really just to pick up again on something you've mentioned there about um if you're maybe looking at trying to get some of these riders up to the the, the really top levels in the future then there may be a consideration to having to get involved in more european events because the bar is set so high i mean what challenges does that pose financially and logistically from Isle of Man's cycling side at, at this particular level if riders are having to go to the likes of Europe to get these opportunities to, and to open those doors for the years to come? I don't think it's been any any different to past years, really. It's, it's always been challenging financially and logistically, but I, I think it's about being realistic. I, th- I think what we have, having looked at what's, you know, what some of the UK junior teams now, now offer some of the better teams, I don't think we've got anything different here. So if you talk about a support network that Alaman Sport A deliver, you know, so that can be nutritional, sports nutrition input, sports psychology, strength and conditioning, all those sorts of things, we've got that. So for me, the challenge for me is to try and sort of bring some partnerships together that can create an academy that's that's kind of there forevermore. What you see in the UK is teams come and go, and it's obviously it's, it's quite as we are, you know, quite reliant on corporate sponsorship. Which you know, I'm glad to say, Upmost are, are supporting us up, up until the end of 2025, and and it's been essential for quite to be quite frank to to deliver some of this stuff. But I think if you look at what Alaman Sport in general can offer, I think we we we've got all the ingredients to offer a really good sustainable cycling academy for under 19s, which is a junior category. But I also think potentially for the under 23 category, what we want to deliver is we want to be able to give those riders that are riding through the youth league at Dot at Dots League on a Tuesday night, which has been so successful. We want for them to be able to see girls and boys to be able to see what's next and be able to see, yeah, I've got something there. If I if I want to be a little bit more ambitious and I think this is what I want to do, I'd like, you know, I want to go to that. And I think we've we've had that in some respects, but like everything, everything evolves a little bit and we we have to adapt to that. So I think hopefully we can have, str- we have quite strong links to Isle of Man Sport Aid already, but I think it's about bringing it together and in sort of an academy package, package um, 
so that's 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 what we're trying to create at the moment and um hopefully hopefully possibly might not be able to get it to the place we want to for 2024 but i'd certainly like to think for 2025 we should be able to do that but it it will look a little bit different next year in terms of the race calendar for for some of this age group we're already looking at three to four sort of european races mixed in with some of the U- the the bigger uk junior races so really challenging but the other thing to say is we've got so much experience as well you know we've got experienced coaches we've got mark christian like i said you know tom mattone is a big kenyx all all these sorts of andrew roach you know, all these sorts of people who have got a wealth of experience and i think people have always sort of tapped into that experience in, in an individual way so it's about bringing it together as as one package i think could be um yeah i think it would be the right thing to do just to talk a little bit more about like you've like you've just um explained there this idea of setting up an academy to maybe have a more a solid and clear structure in place you say it's um it would be a big ask to try and get it ready uh, for 2024 so what is a realistic time frame at this point do you think to have something like that set up if it can be done well like i say this time next year i like to think we've we've got a package so that what i mean by package is that are, you know a rider or a parent is they'll be able to see a complete structure of what it looks like what they what they get for it you know so for example we're one of the big challenges that um a rider has going from the youth category which is under 16s to under 19s is the fact that they go from short sort of circuit races you know uh up to going up to the next Castriga, they'll they'll be riding two to three hour races, multi-day races. So the challenges are quite big. So I think, you know, there's things like race training days we can do through the winter where they, the academy meet together, you know, once or twice a month. Uh, we do, race, you know, race specific days. So for example, in a, in a junior race, you might, when you puncture, you'll have a team car, you'll get a wheel replacement. You then, you know, so particularly if you're riding the European race, they have a race convoy of cars behind the race and the rider can use them to enable them to get back into the into the group and things like this. And it's all these things that they might potentially experience that for the first time for real. So can we reenact that in a safe environment to enable them to not to be a big shock? And that's just one example of what we can do as a as sort of trying to deliver sort of race ready days, if you like, through the winter time. So some of the things we can create now, but I think it's it's the visibility of the academy and what the package looks like is not quite there yet. And I think mean, there's still some conversations to have with Alaman Sport Aid as well. So I don't want to jump the gun, but I, you know, from for in my role as development officer, I, I can, you know, we're already speaking to the coaches to deliver race ready days. The riders, you know, some of our junior riders are riding for UK teams next year, but most of them aren't. But I'd, I'd still have that core group of riders to help get them ready for their junior years which is you know completely different style of racing so hopefully we can get them all sort of in in the right mindset ready to go for 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 the racing in 2024 and in terms of trying to get riders through what could be an academy set up maybe in the future if it all comes to light i mean cycling just like many other top level sports is an incredibly tough game to try and get people into the uh, elite level from wh- whether it's the Isle of Man or elsewhere. So, if an academy system was to be brought in in the in the years to come, how do you think that would actually open up opportunities more compared to the system that we've got now? Yeah, it's, I, I mean, I have asked myself the question: Is what you know, why change something that's so successful? I think the thing I'd say is, I think we've got to recognise that you know, like I previously said, you know, everything evolves, and cycling certainly has gone through a radical change. So, at the very top level, what you're seeing is on the road is that young riders so when i talk about young riders we're seeing sort of 20 20 on year olds you know winning at the highest level so winning the tour de france winning some of the classic races and that age of rider probably about even five or six years ago probably wouldn't have been tested in the tour de france even you know teams might have employed uh you know taken on riders that age but probably would have held back from blooding them in 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 that level of race but in 2020 you saw a 21 year old win the tour de france and everything changed since then and and i think it, it's just it, it, it's exploded in terms of what's happening now is teams are now employing younger riders they're also looking at the junior age category european races they're looking at the results of that in a similar way to football has gone right down into the younger age groups and started signing riders right pro cycling teams are now signing junior riders at 16 17 year olds with a view to them turning pro at 18 19 when they come out of the junior ranks 
and they're specifically looking at the European races, which is why it's that's what's changed in the last two or three years, and it's changed really quickly and and um, in a short you know such a short space of time. We're now that teams would be looking at riders that age. So I think that's why it's so important that we. It's not about these riders have to get to this level. It's about potentially what it takes to get to that level, and about getting the best out of what these riders are and making them. Uh, you know, helping them understand what they need to do to be ready and what to to kind of expect from. Like I say, coming from an under sixteen to an under nineteen, so that you know the shock is lessened a little bit, and uh, and and you know ultimately they're they're ready not just physically but psychologically as well, you know, and they've got uh, some support network around them to help to help get the best out of themselves. And not just the riders. We'll um, talk a little bit about the, the the coaching opportunities available. You've already alluded to a couple of names there. You know the likes of. Uh... Uh, Tom Mazzoni, Andy Roche, Peter Kenyuk, etc. You got the likes of Gianni Epifani and Rob Sorby out with the Island Games team earlier in the summer. How important is it that uh, if it's available for all parties that the Isle of Man continues to maximise what they can get from these coaches? And the coaches themselves, of course, are uh, getting something out of it as well because the Isle of Man, in that sense, seems like it's got plenty of options there going forward. It has, and I think the, the reason why... Well, the the cha- the challenge is from a coaching point of view. So cycling has, uh, well, the Alaman has a depth of experience and depth of coaching that's really good. But what you see in cycling is is coaching is quite individual. So you know, athletes will engage with the coach on an individual pace, uh, basis, and they'll get um, you know a training program, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I think what I'd like to see out come out of the academy is that we've got a pool of coaches made available to academy riders i don't envisage that being necessarily compulsory but i i would i would like to think an academy has an overview not from a big brother fence but keeping an eye on the training to make sure you know so if a rider engages into an academy that assumes that you know they've got a, a level of ambition that wants to get them further so i'd i i my view is that you know a good coach should have an overview of of, of the athlete and, and and their training regardless of whether they're getting coached by someone else but I think the point being is I think we have that wealth of experience from the coaches I've spoken to they're all on board with sort of the academy process I think and being involved with it um obviously that takes some financial input from whether that's sponsors whether that's riders whether that's parents of some view so which is why it's, you know it, it will take a bit of time to to put an academy package together if you like and but like i say i think i think we've got all the ingredients there to to work with with partnerships with downland sport aid sponsors with utmost etc etc to deliver that and more probably as important is the people involved you know i.e the coaches with now the like i say inverted commas the season is over in the immediate term in the coming weeks and months before we look towards the next season, the next campaign, whichever you want to call it. What's the immediate plans within the uh, the junior setup? What happens now? So plans are that we have our first junior group meeting on 12th of November. So that'll go through some rough plans on what the season could look like next year. The riders get to meet each other. They get to try kit on uh, size-wise, sizing up kit. And they get their input as to what their ambitions are for the following year. And um, we also... We we will put some expectations in terms out of uh, what we sort of expect for riders, and that that's not uh, not a results focused thing. That's just uh, how we expect them to uh, engage with with the whole process, really, and you know, try and be positive and try and be positive about everyone. But um, we also, like I say, we we will plan some sort of race training days throughout the winter. But um, but yeah, it's it's pretty much looking at plans, get their input, their thoughts on it, and and just a general general meeting. We'll get the parents involved with that as well, and and just get some input for that. So yeah, we've got like I say, well, you know, one of the we we'll have six junior boys next year and four junior girls next year, which is um, really positive sign that you know we're getting more and more youth girls coming through. So to get them through to you know, it's obviously it's sometimes quite challenging once they turn to junior because, like I say, the opportunities for girls on the road is is quite difficult because they have to jump 
sometimes right up into the elite level rather into their own age category so that is really challenging so to see four junior girls come through and they're all you know they're all at a, a good level that although they'll be challenging to ride sort of uk national series and some european events i don't think they'll be completely out of their depth and what's great about this age category is you quite often see you know in their first year junior that coming into their second year they just you know, they blossom and they, they go on to bigger and better things and getting through that first year of junior, which is why getting through that first year is so important with, with a support network, you know, to keep them engaged and believe in themselves that, you know, you can develop and you can get better and you, you will get better, you know, as long as you buy to the process and keep working hard and yeah, really positive, a really positive group of riders for 2024. I'm really looking forward to seeing what, what they can do in some of the certainly in some of the European races we've got planned for next year. Thank you for having the stamina to make it to the end of the Manx Radio Sportscast. You're clearly someone who has their eye on the ball at all times. Want to hear more about the latest sporting news across the Isle of Man and much more? Then might I recommend you take the plunge and subscribe to this series or a wide range of Manx Radio podcasts at your favourite podcast provider so that, in a flash, all of our finest moments take a winner's place on your smartphone. Thank you.